Two weeks ago, I posted a video about how Microsoft is actively harming its users with Windows Update, uh, harming their productivity, damaging machines, deleting data. Um, you know, these are the kinds of things that Microsoft Update gets you into. These are the problems that you face. It seems that Windows updates get pushed regardless of their negative impact on the user, uh, and Microsoft seems not to care at all, especially when you consider the fact that so many people uh, on Microsoft's product quality teams and testing teams were uh, fired a couple years ago. And yet another example of how free and open source software is just superior to proprietary offerings and how the Linux way, trademark, provides a better user experience experience to end users, let's go ahead and examine Ubuntu's 2104 release and examine how Canonical responded to problems which reportedly only affected 17 people. This is going to be fun. First, a little background though. With every new release of Ubuntu, end users get notified that, hey, there's a new version of Ubuntu available and it's available for you to download for free if you want to. You're not forced. Nobody's going to make you upgrade to the new version of Ubuntu. Well, these notifications have been notably absent since the release of Ubuntu 21.04. Why is that? Well, maybe it's because Canonical respects you. <laughs> a few people found that when they upgraded from Ubuntu 20.10, uh, to version 2104, uh, their machines became unbootable. It would, it would boot up, but to a black screen, no disk activity, uh, and no way to get to a usable desktop or even drop into a shell. Now, admittedly, not all users who upgraded uh, were actually left with broken Ubuntu installs. Indeed, it seemed that only MacBooks were affected by this uh, if they were running a very specific version of old UEFI. On April 19th, a bug report was added to launchpad.net. It said, the latest update to Hirsute uh, made the MacBook Air from 2012 unbootable. It could be recovered by booting a 2004 live CD, downloading 2004's shim package, and overwriting the files in EFI slash Ubuntu and EFI slash boot with the files shipped in the shim package with two known affected machines. Now keep in mind, this was posted on April 19th. Ubuntu 20.04 wasn't released until April 22nd. Within the first few hours of this report, other users had confirmed that this was a, a real deal bug uh, and needed to be addressed. During this time, Ubuntu maintainers actually issued an advisory uh, asking users to not upgrade to the new version of Ubuntu because there was a slim chance that it could result in an unbootable system. So by April 30th, a fix had been tested and issued, uh, yet Ubuntu still has not pushed an upgrade notification to any of its users. This bug is confirmed to have affected 17 people, and notably, it would have only affected uh, MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros with UEFI version 1.10 firmware. Truly a slim percentage of the overall Ubuntu user base, especially when you consider that many of these machines are over a decade old at this point. But out of respect for the people who actually use their operating system, Canonical decided we're not going to push even a notification of an update uh, and issue an advisory saying you might not want to upgrade. As of the time of this recording, Ubuntu still hasn't pushed, a, pushed the upgrade uh, notification. So you're telling me that an operating system vendor can receive critical feedback before a product goes live, prevent machines from upgrading to the new buggy version, fix the issue in less than a week, and then push updates once the problem has been resolved? Well, yeah. <laughs> See, free software lives and dies on its utility. Meanwhile, proprietary software usually just relies on market share dominance, vendor lock-in, and the Stockholm syndrome of using terrible products and combating it day in and day out when you're just trying to get your work done. And they only answer to their shareholders. So the next time your Windows machine gets stuck in a boot loop or has a blue screen of death every time it tries to start up, or maybe even uh, has diminished performance after a Windows update, you could take comfort in the fact that Microsoft could care enough, but simply doesn't. And you wouldn't be having these problems if you were using a good operating system. <laughs> I want to say thank you to all of my patrons, without whom I would not be able to do this. I want to say thank you to Nima Panahi, one of my top tier Singularity members. Uh, Nima, my dude, you are truly appreciated. I want to say thanks to all the people on YouTube as well who uh, are, have become YouTube members over the last couple months. Uh, if you want to become a patron, there's a link down below, or you can become a YouTube member by hitting that join button. No matter what you do, it's always appreciated, and it's how I continue to make these videos for you guys. Uh, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.